after the last video, you know, I shot a Howard Hill style bow. Some thought, okay, now he's completely gaga. <laughs> yeah, today we shoot this one. Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I would like to try something new and I got myself a Oneida. This is the Osprey. I got it from Merlin Archery in the UK. They made me a good price so I took one because first of all I always like the design. I, 8 o'clock and windy. Uh, the normal compound bows with the pulleys at the end, I don't like. This one still looks like, you know, like a short a recurve, a reflex bow. And that's why I always like the design of this one. But of course, what I got is a left hand one. So I put there on the right side and I will shoot thumb release. What I did now, because this bow comes without any arrow rest, I put one of these cheap ones of the snake bows on it that I have an arrow rest. I will see. Maybe I put some felt or something here, but this comes later. Compound bow, what's the benefit of a compound bow? This is now adjusted at 30 pounds. You can adjust it differently with uh, the plastic. Wait a second. The wind blew it away. There are these plastic parts. And there's even a description where you can change here these things and then you have up to 50 pounds. And the benefit of a bow like this is in the beginning you have the full draw weight. And when the pulley kicks in, here, then it go from here on, it's easy. So the last few inches are very easy to pull and there is like you hold nothing anymore. So you don't feel the 30 pounds. Here you start feeling them. That's the benefit of a compound bow. And of course, less mass means more speed. And this is what we try out. Now uh, the prices, I think, but you need to check, they are in th available in three different lengths. I got the longest one with a max draw of 31 inches and they are available in two different si uh, draw weights. This one is 30 to 50 pounds and you can have 50 to 70 pounds. Of course I only got the 30 to 50 and I think this one is adjusted to 30. Oh. And now we see how it works shooting a compound bow or this is a hybrid bow with thumb release. Ooh. As I don't know what the bow is doing, I start, I start very short distance and what I forgot to mention, minimum grain per pound is 8, so 30 pounds, 200 something grain, these arrows are 450, so they are way too heavy now. But just to see what the bow is doing, uh, with this arrow rest I'm most probably not happy, but we see. Look at this. Even 450 grain arrows, ping, and they disappear in the target. Nice. But what I can tell directly, even if I shoot only two meters, the arrow goes way to the left. So I really need to adapt to this because it's a center shot bow and not like a normal, still to the left, not like a normal horse bow. Uh, you know, you get used to it and this one goes really through the scent. But of course we have the the Aries, the arrows from Martin Spurry. They are 300 grain, I think, something. So they are in the, they are 10, is it a little rainy? They are 10 grain per pound. And of course, uh, once I decide which arrow rest I make, then I will make a knocking point right now. I don't have, this is part one of this video. There will be more, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's raining now, yeah. Still to the left. Holy. Ah, uh, now you get there. So start short distance. You really need to get the feeling for what this bow is doing. You don't feel? It's really raining now, so we need to stop and continue when it stops raining. Let me show you what I mean. I shoot the white sticker on the head and I point there as I would usually do with my every bow I shoot with some release. Let's see what it does. Go 
but still a little to the left and a little down. So start short distance that you get the hang of it. Still, I thought I'm in the center, but I'm not because this is a center shot bow. So it's a little learning curve with it. I was forced, forcing myself to point more to the right and it still went to the left. So this is one thing you really need to keep in mind here. But I guess after a few shots you get there and you get the feeling of what this bow is doing. It's only different. Does it make a difference if I hold the bow upright? Or if I tilt the bow as I usually do? Ah, getting there, see? But still, to the left. But we're getting closer. Question for me, how is it now with the thumb ring? I shot first with the leather protection, now I shoot the hybrid thumb ring from Bamboo Archery. One of my favorites right now, as you know. If you watch my videos, if not, watch my videos. Let's see how this one feels. Oh, still to the left, seriously. That really takes a little practice. Mm -hmm. So, thumb ring works. Works pretty well. How would it be now with this thumb guard from Elong or Elong Arrow, Elong Outdoor? You know, made some videos about this. <clears throat> First I hook it a little and then I see if I can shoot shallow hook with this one because this is of interest for me. If shallow hook is possible, doable, how easy it is. Let's see. First we hook it a little around to keep it safe. Always do this short distance in front of a target guys. Not that something will slip and the arrow goes uncontrolled somewhere off. Shallow hook. Oh, nice, only the beginning is a little tough. And then it works. Nice, so even shallow hook. Takes a bit practice, it takes a lot of practice, at least for me. And once a knocking point is on it, most probably everything will be a bit more easy. But I need to see what I do with the arrow wrist. Hmm. Still down left, only <laughs> two meters. But shallow hook with this one, nice. Uh, with these handle scales, when they get a little wet or your hands are wet, it's a little slippery. So always make sure that it's dry. And now the Fu Hao. Shallow hook. Let's see how this one works. It's, uh, ooh. This arrow rest is not good. So, uh, but of course, what can you expect? Let's see. Oh, oh I'm not done. Now. So it's a little tricky because you have in the beginning the full poundage to overcome with your shallow hook that you don't slip. Feels not so secure, but you get there. But then it's like a release trigger. Nice. Still left and down, but we get there eventually. Not too bad. Let's see what the crony will say. I should know with my leather thingy again, gives me the safest feeling for now. I said 300 grain arrows, 30 pounds, 10 grain per pound. 231.
229. 229. 229. With 10 green arrows. Hoo -hoo. One more thing to test and then we're done for today. One question, of course, which was very interesting. But I should shoot without any leather protection then. Gives you a nicer handling. And it's wet anyway. So the fine thing, you can shoot this bear hunt. So the question was for me, <laughs> is it doable or is it nonsense? Yeah, when you know how to shoot first. Oh, you see this power? It's hilarious. This is nice, look, Slavic. Works just nice with it. Let's do this again. So slowly first. But of course you always need to reach your full draw then. Otherwise... I see now I'm getting there. I think I prefer to shoot from the shelf. So I may, may will make you something. This fiddly thing is not working with me. Without this fiddly arrow rest. And with the right knocks and with the right technique, obviously. This is a little in the way up there. So you need to, oops, make sure that it's not in the way. But hey, with a little practice, Lars, I can see that working for you. But I have to admit, I still don't have the feeling for it or what it's doing. So that's why we try now 30 meters with thumb. Still to the left, but fast like hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was wobbly. So, arrow knocking point and proper setup is required. Still a little to the left, but holy cow, is this fun! <laughs> yeah, demanding, but fun, I can tell you. Ah, still to the left. Yes, yes. You adapt. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, needs practice. It's totally different from what I usually shoot. I will set up here uh, with, with felt and with a small bump or something that I rest my arrow directly here. This one is not going to work or I get a different arrow rest here. This fiddly thingy is not going to work with me. So it's impressive, the, the speed and, and how this feels is nice. It only takes a lot of practice that you get there where you want to get because you can't even mount a sight here because it's not going to work. So a sight only works if you shoot this one. Left hand, then you can make your sight and then everything is fine. But of course with thumb release, <laughs> you need to do it instinctively, intuitively. But heck, is it fun. So thank you Merlin Archery for providing me with this bow. Of course I paid, but they made me a little a bit of a good price. So if you're interested in this bow in Europe, Merlin Archery is one address where you can go and get one. They have a few of them in stock. This is the long draw version with 31 inches. It's just fine and it's, it's a pretty, it doesn't look bad. I mean, you still have at least, you know, this recurves then that's why this bow still looks like a bow for me, like a very short Turkish, but then with 31 inch draw. And uh, this is the geometry, it's crazy. Look at the shape of this bow in full draw. And this thing always, you know where the full draw is, because it stops there, look at this. And now I get the feeling, I get a feeling, so I did and missed again. So really it takes a bit and I guess with a shallow hook thumb ring you have even more control. But it works. Let's shoot three more slabs again and we're done. Of course it's expensive. 
850 pounds I think or something but I put the link in the description and shipping and then I had to pay customs because UK you know with your brexit was another 167 euros for customs let's see Slavic again hey yeah <laughs> nice second error hates me <laughs> and you need a knocking point because this one is really not forgiving when you have the arrow too low or too high so this one needs a little fine-tuning setup but then you're ready to go really interesting so I know a lot of you think about this and many of you did it already shot the left hand compound thumb release you can write me if you did it already in the comments your experience if I am the only one shooting now far to the left or if that happens to you too and you really needed to adjust your you know how to point and you draw and the arrow goes around the bow and now the arrow goes through the bow so that's a little different at least for me <laughs> cool so again thank you very much to Merlin Archer in UK it was Daniel Jones I know he's the same name like the new owner of Malta Archer but it's a different Daniel Jones Daniel thank you very much for sending this bow to you. but this bow is worth it so if you have a thousand euros to spare and you want to have this experience of 230 foot per second with 10 grain arrows you can shoot eight grain arrows with it but I'm a little you know it's 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 quite a powerhouse so this 10 grain and stiff enough so make sure that they're stiff enough otherwise they break in your face so it's a little dangerous for the rest pretty cool expect an update when I finish the setup here then I will do more reviews in slow mos and all the stuff and yada 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 I will tell you how it works that was part one thank you very much for watching catch you in the next one